on Q2, cracking down on shoplifting. But I just knew that stuff, something has to be done with things like this. Residents take action to stop thieves. Plus a historical tour. This is a treasure, uh, this home. Built in 1885, home to two former governors. We'll take you inside a Helena mansion the governor will soon call home and honoring a family's heritage. To be able to reach people so that they maybe understand the significance of what a simple piece of fry bread means. A Billings woman dishing up delicious food in remembrance of loved ones. The MTN 430 News starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Andrea Lutz. Tonight, a look at how shoplifting is keeping businesses and even other shoppers on high alert. In 2023, Billings Police received over 1,047 shoplifting reports, pretty even with a number from 2022, which was 1,066. And more recently, a Billings woman says she saw it happen right before her eyes. Feeling frustrated, she even took action. Our Charlie Kleps dives into the possible reason for this steady uptick. It was in this Albertsons parking lot where Amy Burroughs was met face to face with a couple of shoplifters. But instead of ignoring the problem as she's done before, she got involved taking pictures of them in action. I was um, walking in to get some groceries. When Amy Burroughs arrived at Albertsons Tuesday night, a routine trip to the store quickly turned into a situation she can't stop thinking about. As I was walking in, I they almost ran into me with their cart. That was the moment she ran face first into this couple, whom she believes was stealing several carts full of groceries. She says the wheels on their cart jammed and none of the items were bagged. They didn't even take stuff that they need. They took stuff that they want. Valentine chocolate, armor all for their car, Pepsi. They didn't have milk and bread and that kind of stuff. And unfortunately, retail theft is becoming a big problem, not just here, but across the country. According to the National Retail Federation, 83% of retailers now say retail theft is a major problem. We see at least once a week. It's really disrespectful. Tim and Megan Harris own Second Chance Marketplace on Grand Avenue. The couple says they can't even keep track of how often they are stolen from. I assume it's daily. We just don't have time to monitor the cameras. Their store caters to people seeking secondhand items with a focus on keeping keeping items affordable. And their unique business model is a part of what makes this so frustrating. If it's affordable, then you can buy food and you can buy stuff for your family. That's really sad, people running out with cartfuls of stuff, people grabbing stuff and running. Um, our prices are low and we work with people. As for the thefts at Albertsons, the store is looking into it, but there is little employees can do. An Albertsons spokesperson says, quote, our policy strongly discourages associates from confronting anyone suspected of shoplifting and only associates who have undergone de-escalation training should intervene. Why should you get groceries for free when the rest of us have to pay for them? Frustrating for not only retail stores, but also shoppers who worry the problem will only continue to grow. Something has to be done with them or it's just gonna get worse. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. A well-known flop house to Billings Police is now the focus of another early morning shooting. Nearby residents are voicing frustration over the crime. Police responded again to 313 South 28th Street for reports of shots fired. But officers only learned of a shooting victim when the 34-year-old arrived at the hospital. He is listed in critical condition. This latest shooting is the same location where a five-hour standoff happened in November following the death of a Billings man and his infant son. But for nearby neighbors, the violence is becoming an everyday concern. Today I called the police to see if it was safer enough for my grandkids to come out and go to school because they're all still over there. Well, police say the investigation is ongoing and a suspect is yet to be identified. A 22 year old man is charged in the death of a 64 year old Sheridan, Wyoming woman found dead inside of her home. The woman's body was found Sunday on Gladstone Avenue, and police say she died of blunt force trauma. Sheridan Police Captain Tom Ringley says the suspect is Israel Melvin, now charged with second-degree murder. Melvin has been in jail since Sunday after being arrested for a controlled substance. Ringley says police don't have a motive yet for the murder.
For most of our area, temperatures have been holding steady or dropping throughout the day since the morning hours. And with that comes an increasing chance where we could see some snow. It's going to get cold enough. It's going to turn into that light powdery snow for most of the area. But some areas an inch or two certainly could accumulate, especially as the snow continues off and on over the next several days. By the time we get to the weekend, we could even be flirting with some record cold temperatures. Readings as cold as the teens to 20s below with additional wind chills. Forecast coming up. Governor Greg Gianforte and his wife Susan plan to move into the historic Hauser Mansion on Helena's west side. Gianforte says they plan to live here for the remainder of his term. MTN's Marion Davidson takes us inside the home, which already housed two previous governors. I'm in the Mansion District in Helena, and right now I am walking up to the Samuel T. Hauser Mansion, which will once again be home to a Montana governor. Come on, let's go inside. This is a treasure, uh, this home, built in 1885, home to two former governors. Uh, Susan and I will be the third first couple to live in this home. That's right. This three-story home in Helena holds a whole lot of history. It was built by Montana's first territorial governor, Samuel Hauser. Then it was home to Bishop Carroll. Then decades later, former governor Tim Babcock and his wife lived here. It has also been a convent and a family home. It hasn't changed hands many times. That's the key, I think, to it, the uniqueness and the beauty of it, that it's still in place. You can see some of that uniqueness here in this stained glass from Tiffany, New York. And here in these stained glass panels crafted by the same man who created the stained glass at the Cathedral of St. Helena. We wanted our uh, residence in Helena to be a house of hospitality. And this house is just uh, invites hospitality. With large rooms like this, complete with fireplaces on the first floor, it's a place where the Gianfortes can host people, something the governor said is very important to him. Susan and I have made it a practice of entertaining guests almost every evening. We're here in Helena, and it's uh, people of different uh, backgrounds, and uh, it's a great way to find common ground. The Gianfortes bought the Hauser Mansion as a personal residence with their own funds. The price tag, according to the governor's office, $4 million. We're going to offer it in a good faith effort to provide a warm, uh, appropriate long-term residence for future first families. Now, Montana does have a governor's mansion, but it has sat empty since 2021 pending needed updates, big updates like asbestos mitigation, new plumbing and a new electrical system. The state has appropriated more than $2 million in funding to renovate this house, but return bids have been nearly double that amount. It's a little long in the tooth, as far as what happens with the current governor's mansion and the donation of this house, that is up to the state to decide. But what is certain, this will be the first family's home in Helena through June Forte's tenure in office. The uh, sellers, the Rappaports are so excited to share this with Montanans and um, with the governor. And there you have it, the legacy of the Samuel T. Hauser mansion continues. In Helena, Mary and Davidson, MTN News. Tax experts say the start of the new year is a great time to review your withholdings because changes are now in effect. Legislation enacted in 2021 lowered income tax rates from 6.75% to 5.9%. It means this could change the calculation for Montana wage withholding. Officials are encouraging people to review their withholding because withholding too much means you can get a refund, but withholding too little means you might owe. Service workers are especially encouraged to review since their tips are now exempt from Montana tax. A new federal rule aims to bolster legal protections and compensation for millions of U.S. workers. The Labor Department says gig workers, janitors and truckers could be considered as employees rather than independent contractors. And this would require employers to extend benefits like minimum wage, overtime and unemployment insurance. The new rule replaces the Trump era standard that narrowed the criteria for classifying employees as contractors. Tonight, we're stepping inside a Billings classroom where students are learning about and celebrating indigenous culture in a pretty sweet way. Our Haley Monaco explains in tonight's Positively Montana story. Positively Montana is sponsored by Yellowstone Valley Electric Cooperative. Would you have it again? Yes. Yes. 
for a group of sixth graders at Riverside Middle School. Tuesday morning was especially sweet. We've been focusing on the indigenous cultures. Or savory. Obviously everything is centered around fry bread. English teacher Caitlin Greenwood wanted to bring in a special treat to make learning more fun for her enriched classes. So I wanted to make it more personal to my students. Greenwood uh, knew exactly who to so call. I was kind of honored and I said, well, sure, of course. To create a legacy for people to understand and appreciate their Sioux heritage, Linda Gilchrist opened Mama Jones Fry Bread, an Indian taco food truck. The name um, Mama Jones is actually after my mom. She passed away in 2015 and the fry bread was something that she always made for us as kids because there was eight of us. Gilchrist started the food truck in the summer of 2023 as a way to stay busy. I had recently lost a little brother and I think it was part of that process of pouring myself into something in order to honor my mother and my brother at the same time. Gilchrist eventually understood what her mother once went through. And I remember being a little girl and she would be frying and putting it in paper bags and we would eat it as fast as she would fry it. When she first opened up, she would roll out each piece of fry bread by hand. Not able to keep up with demand, she changed course. Actually, I didn't think that it would be as popular as it was. It has taken off, which we're very thankful for. Indian tacos and fry bread made with the special ingredient of love and a family carrying on a special name. And even though people didn't know her, they would know her by this little pink truck. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 430 News on Q2, the end of an era. Rail enthusiasts react to the BNSF taking over of Montana Rail Link. We're going to have that story in just a bit, but up next, time to bundle up. Frigid temperatures are quickly approaching, and Ed will have the latest in the full seven-day forecast right after this.